This tutorial will demonstrate the performance of an independent or unpaired samples t-test. In this case, we would have two independent samples uh, or two different populations in which we would like to compare them on a single numeric or quantitative outcome. Now there are several assumptions that we have when we're doing an independent t-test. And the first, and possibly the most important, is the fact that we have two independent samples. In other words, these are two samples or populations that are not related to each other in some way. And we're going to count on that difference to then explain any difference we see between the two groups in the outcome measure. The next assumption is that the outcome measure is a quantitative variable, either interval or ratio scale. The next assumption is that the two groups were either randomly selected or randomly assigned. The next assumption is that we have uh, normally distributed data and so we're assuming that the data has been appropriately screened to make sure it was accurate, complete, and then met our tests of normality. So what we're going to look at, the data we're going to look at here, um, the uh, independent variable or the group category that we're going to use to designate our groups is going to be class technique. So we've got um, group, two groups of students that were instructed on two different uh, teaching techniques and we want to determine if the teaching technique has had an impact on their course grade or their GPA. So what we're trying to test here is a cause and effect relationship between the type of class instruction and on the final course grade. So the first thing we want to do then is determine a null hypothesis. And so in this case, because we have only two groups, um, the null would be that the sample mean for instruction type A will be equal to the sample mean for instruction type B. Okay, and we need to determine our, our hypothesis testing criteria, and we're going to use the alpha level of P less than 0.05. So if we calculate a T value that's associated with an alpha level less than 0.05, then we will say that the two groups are statistically different and then we can reject the null hypothesis. If the t-value we calculate is associated with a p-value greater than 0.05, then we would say that there is an unclear difference between the two groups uh, and we would then accept the null hypothesis. So once we've established that, we can go ahead and analyze the data. So we want to go to the Analyze menu, Compare Means, and then we're going to choose the independent samples t-test. Okay, so what we want to do first of all is enter in in the test variables box what our outcome measure is. In this case, it's GPA or course grade. The next thing we want to do in the grouping variable box is enter in the variable that we're using to designate our two groups. So in this case, I'm using a number code to designate our two groups. So we've got two class techniques designated by a 1 for group 1 and designated by a 2 for group 2. Now we can designate those groups also using um, a word description. And so we'll I'll quickly go here to the variable view. And you can see here if we look at class technique, which is our grouping variable, I've given a value to the word description. So here uh, group number one is a lecture format group and group number two is an interactive format group. So those are two different teaching techniques and I'm just using a number to code those um, along with the, the word descriptor of what those, those codes mean. Okay, so let's go back to our, our, our data view here real quick. And go back to the analyze. Okay, so analyze, compare means, independent samples, t-test. So here we have class technique again entered into our grouping variable. What we need to do before we can move on is we need to tell SPSS which numbers we're using to designate our two groups. So we click on the define groups button and you can see here uh, group number one is designated using a one and group number two is designated using a two. Now, we could use any number we want to designate the two groups. We could use 463 for group one and 965 for group two. It doesn't really matter as long as we tell SPSS what those codes actually are. What we could also do is actually use a quantitative variable using a cut point technique 
to create our two groups. So maybe we had collected age and we wanted to create two groups based upon their numeric age. So we could say we want to create two groups at the cut point of age 45. So all the people above the age of 45 would be in one group. All the people below the age of 45 would be in another group. The problem with this technique is that, again, we can only create two groups. So depending on uh, if we wanted to create more groups, then we'd have to use a different technique. Okay, so But we're going to use the specified values technique. Okay, So we've defined our groups, so we can go ahead and click Continue. Okay, and now we're ready to perform our technique. So we click OK. <clears throat> and we see here on the output, we've got our, our descriptive statistics. So again, here's our true groups designated, lecture format, interactive format. We've got the number of subjects in each group. We've got the mean GPA for each group. And then we've got the standard deviation or the variance within each group. Okay, so in order to test our hypothesis, one of the, the next assumption we have to look at, um, and the last assumption associated with independent t-testing, is to make sure that the variance within the outcome variable, in this case GPA, is equally distributed. In other words, we don't have more variability in group 1 versus group 2. If we had a lot of variability in group 1 versus group 2, for example, it really wouldn't be a fair comparison anymore. And so we use Levine's test for the equality of variances to determine if the descriptive, or I'm sorry, the outcome variable is has equal variance. If it doesn't, then we violated an assumption of t-testing and we need to look at an alternative um, way to interpret the result. Now, how we make the decision of whether or not we have equal variances or not is we look at the alpha value for this particular Levine's test, significance level. If it's greater than 0.05, then we can assume we have equal variances. If it's less than 0.05, then we would assume there's unequal variances. Now, testing at the 0.05 level is very stringent. If we wanted to be a little less stringent, we might test at the 0.01 level. And so if this significance score was greater than 0.01, then we could say um, that the variance, equal variances is assumed. If it would be less than 0.01, then we would say that equal variances are not assumed. So it's really a, a level of interpretation as far as how you want to interpret Levine's test. You want to be very stringent using the 0.05 level or less stringent using the 0.01 level. We're going to pretend we want to be very stringent here, so we're going to test at the 0.05 level. So since we haven't met that assumption, we can continue on with the analysis, but we're going to have to look at the t-score a little bit differently. And so as you look here in this output, you can see we actually have two t-scores reported. We have one for equal variances assumed, and we have one for equal variances not assumed. And so that's how we deal with the possibility we don't have equal variance. So since going with our example, we've decided to assume we don't have equal variances, we're going to use this t-score to make our hypothesis decision. Okay, so we look at this t-score, and then we look at the alpha level associated with it, and that's an alpha level of 0.44, so that is greater than an alpha level of 0.05. And so at this point, we would accept the null hypothesis and say that any differences between the two groups is unclear. In other words, we don't really know why they're different. It's not because of the, the class technique. It doesn't appear to be because of the class technique because there's not a significant difference between the two scores. What could be contributing to the difference we see, but the difference is not significant? Well, there could be some measurement error. There could be some other factors that are contributing to GPA other than the teaching technique, which is certainly a possibility. And so at this point, we would conclude that in this sample, class technique does not seem to have an effect. So to summarize, when we're doing the independent t-test, we first have to make sure we have the proper data. We have, uh, as far as numerical outcomes, we need to make sure we're comparing two independent groups. And then we've got the assumptions that we want to meet, which include randomization of some level, which includes um, making sure we have uh, normal, normally distributed data. 
making sure our outcome variable has equal variances. And then we're going to look at the calculated t-score and then the p-value associated with it and then compare it to our predetermined criteria and then we make the decision whether or not to accept or reject the null hypothesis.